Wow, we've seen some interesting moves on individual selected stocks. Before we get there and recap the individual trades, which we are looking at as at the close on Wednesday, let's just recap what the markets are doing so far this week. As you can see, the difference between yesterday's and trading, uh, yesterday and today's, pardon me, trading session has been this one particular candlestick right here. It has pushed up higher, back above this really tentative entry, about 18,091. We are moving back into the danger zone box. We're trying to push up into it. My only reluctance to trade uh, to the long side is the fact that we are still making a series of lower highs and we are very, very close to resistance. If you are taking any of the long trades, please keep your tights very stop because at any moment, any particular day, we could see the rollover take place, not only on the Dow Jones Industrial Average, but have a look at the S&P 500, a very similar looking chart. We're still making, again, essentially a series of lower highs. We did get very close to the mid-March swing high. We still yet to break above it. You can see the selling pressure coming back in. And at this location, two times where we have touched it in the past, it has been the place to start selling the market. That is my only contention, trading to the upside on these particular markets. On Monday, we came into the week with a shooting star candlestick. We had a hangman candlestick on the Tuesday. And then we've seen a little bit of a bullish candlestick come into the market for the NASDAQ on the Wednesday. Now, this is what many people would call a morning star reversal candlestick pattern. It's really essentially a bullish type of signal saying, look, it's time to trade long. However, Candlesticks derive their meaning only in the right location and it isn't occurring out of support. In fact, it's occurring out of resistance. So you can't go out and call this an evening star reversal type of candlestick pattern, even though it sort of suggests uh, in the sentiment that it is. I'm very reluctant to call it. I'm still, again, hesitant to trade above 5,047. Uh, intraday, I'd like to see a move, hold and close above this level than a continuation before legging into overly aggressive, uh, potentially QQQ trades um, and other types of directional momentum trades like that across all three of the US markets. Again, I'm still very, very cautious as we are moving into resistance and we are moving into the higher or the lower swing highs right at the current junction. Now, just to recap some individual trades, which I haven't done during the week because we have seen a couple of profitable trades stem from last week and also into this week. Amazon, we had a nice little trade. Somewhere about 381 was the breakout type of trigger. We had a target up here at 387. Uh, we didn't actually hit it or we hadn't hit it moving into the week. Obviously, this is Tuesday's candle where we did hit it. Uh, we came very close last Friday. We had a stop here at 378.80 in the event that it wanted to roll over. As of Tuesday, this is another profitable trade up about $7 from the breakout, about 381.11. So it's a nice little trade on Amazon. This trade is closed and now we are absolutely flat moving into earnings, which is coming out on the 22nd. I believe that is Monday week or this coming Monday. So please pay attention to Amazon. We are very flat. We are out of all positions. And as such, just let it be for the rest of this week's trading session. No real net movement on Boeing Airlines. We did see a little bit of a bearish engulfing candlestick pattern. Keep your stop uh, where we have quoted in the past. It is you know, sort of flattening out about and around these resistance levels. So just pay attention to that on Boeing Airlines. Baidu is continuing to break down, down $3.14. We had a good discussion about these three particular candlesticks. We had the engulfing candlestick. Then we had the shooting star coming in right at that declining resistance level. We started to see the breakdown on Tuesday. Today, we are, uh, again, just full breaking down, down $3.14. If you are in this trade, I'd personally place my stop about two sixteen fifteen to begin with. Target is still two oh four fourteen. Originally, I would have had my stop as at yesterday, about 219, but just simply bring it down just to, you know, reflect what is going on with the actual price action. Another stock which has been profitable has been Caterpillar. Look at the breakout we have seen in Caterpillar. We had a long entry, 8203. Here we are hitting our first target at 84.81. So we've come back up. We've rallied into this resistance level. Currently, um, you should be flat in Caterpillar. You should be out of this particular trade. We are at a resistance level. And with the markets moving back up into resistance, trying to push high, you should be out of Caterpillar for profit. And I'd be reluctant at this particular moment in time to take the 86.03 trade at the moment. I'd like to see a couple of days at this resistance level before looking into overly aggressive bullish trades at this particular moment in time. I just needed to reference that also. Uh, CVX has continued in the little bullish swing. This came as a little bit of a surprise. Again, walking into the week, we had everything suggesting that it wanted to break down. Entry at 105.01, that didn't trigger. However, we had a long entry at 109.09. That has triggered and it is profitable again. So this is another trade setup which is profitable 
to the upside. Surprise, surprise, given where the market is trading. Target is still 111.55 um, and I am paying very close attention to that target. I placed my stop somewhere about 108.66. Give it a little bit of leeway based on Wednesday's candlestick, but another profitable trade stemming from that pro analysis class. I have two more stocks which I want to speak about. Actually, I have three more stocks which I want to speak about in this Wednesday afternoon market recap. The first is Facebook. Facebook has been a stock which we've been sort of stalking uh, for a couple of weeks now. We've seen the breakout right here. We've seen the breakout of this resistance level, the pullback into this potential buying box, which we've had on the chart for a very, very long time. We started to see the white candlestick uh, show up or at least an engulfing candlestick, something saying that, look, there are people interested in this stock. On Monday, we pushed above it intraday. We didn't hold. Tuesday, we had a nice bullish continuation type of candlestick. Today, however, we've seen a little bit of a one black crow. Now that's okay. Just be patient with this trade. It may sort of take a couple of days to wriggle out and get back up to our target at about $85.88. So if you are in this trade, that's okay. At the moment, it is slightly negative. It's negative by about 90 cents. That's okay, given the other trades that we've just referenced. Uh, you've got a decision to make. Place your stop at 81.58 or move it down to about $80.50. Uh, this second stop down here is a, a better probability that you will remain in the trade if it does pull back slightly and then continue to the upside. It just comes with a little bit more risk. So that's a decision you need to make. Are we monitoring the intraday action? The good news for Facebook is that uh, after hours right now, uh, is that Netflix, this is one of the stocks which I wanted to mention, Netflix has had uh, or has released earnings and at the moment it is trading up about 5.30 a share. Somewhere up here, it's about $50 um, you know, higher in pre-market or after hours market based on that earnings report. So what we are going to establish in Netflix is a gap to the upside. It probably will influence what the futures are doing overnight or when the market is actually closed. Just pay attention to that. Um, as such, I'm going to sit tight on Netflix. I will wait for the daily candle to form before looking for a gap and go type of continuation trade. Remember this trade back here in mid-January this year at 4.16.13 or 4.16.30 when we got in and we traded it to the upside. That will be the sort of you know type of trade on Netflix. Expected obviously to gap up. It could have actually a bearish daily candlestick uh, within the price action of the daily movement. However, the net movement is certainly going to be positive. I think it's up 11% uh, as I'm talking right now with you up close to or just over $50 in the aftermarket hours based on Netflix moving into profitability long term. Uh, from their financial statements. The last stock which I wanted to reference obviously is Google. Now Google started to see the breakdown yesterday. We came very close to our trigger at 535.06. Today, we have pushed below it. Now this is an interesting candle. This is what we call a hammer at support. I still like this trade to the downside. It's still following the rules. I mean, we had this red box here to say this is going to be selling pressure. It is going to be resistance. We had the bear flag set up. It looks as if it's starting to break to the downside. However, today, Google closed up $1.26. It's not the end of the world by any means. I still have a target down here at 528.64. So if you are in this trade, you know, place your stop. Uh, really, it needs to go at least up here about 549. I'm just a little bit cautious based on Netflix uh, and what that is going to do with the open for lots of stocks tomorrow. You may see a small little gap up, but then the ultimate uh, move to the downside on this particular stop. That's my only worry. So just pay attention to that. It's a nice looking trade. We've got two targets, 528.64 and then 508.50 with an opportunity to re-enter at 523.49. If you want to learn the actual analysis, instead of just recapping these trades um, and the outcomes of the trades, which we've just done in Amazon, in Boeing Airlines, in Baidu and Caterpillar, uh, in CVX breaking to the upside, in Facebook and Google. We also have a lot of trades which haven't triggered yet. GoPro is one in particular, which I'm still a little bit surprised about given the actual chart pattern. Another actually is Tesla. Tesla, we uh, theoretically had an entry at 204.38, even though I missed this trade. And over the weekend, we stopped out at 208.40. Another nice little, you know, $4 move on Tesla to the upside. If you got out at a market order at this particular candlestick on Tuesday, so a lot of action, albeit very select uh, at this particular moment in time on the overall markets, we are again sort of in no man's land on all three of the markets. The market can really go, you know, one of two directions. And it's really a 50-50 sort of judgment call at this particular moment in time. It does appear that we are breaking above this declining resistance level. That is bullish. But having said that, just to see these lower highs and at least to at least be cognizant of this very, very strong resistance level, 
Uh, I think that is what is most important at this particular moment in time on all of the US markets. I'm interested, of course, to see how the earnings are going to influence our top 13 individual trades. We have uh, Goldman Sachs left this week. They are report reporting after hours tomorrow. Uh, so we will technically get to see the price action of Goldman Sachs on Friday and we will get to place a directional trade trigger oh, pardon me, on Goldman Sachs uh, most likely on Monday next week, which will be very, very good. So I'll leave it at that for a Wednesday afternoon market recap. Enjoy your evening, everybody. A lot of stocks which have triggered, um, a lot which are profitable and others which are set up to make the definitive break either to the upside or the downside based on where they are trading at the moment. If you have any questions whatsoever, email me success at pivotpoint-trading.com. Other than that, have a great uh, Wednesday evening. All the best. Goodbye.